before we delve into the muscles themselves, I want to get a couple of things out of the way. This is designed to help you get these muscles under your belt. First, we have a concept of origin, insertion, and belly. Origin and insertion, you're going to hear those terms a lot. Origin is the part of the muscle that moves the least. Insertion is the part of the muscle that moves the most. So for example, the biceps brachii, the origin is up here, the insertion is down here. This is the part that moves when the muscle contracts. I'm not saying that the origin won't move, but what I am saying is that the insertion point of the muscle moves the most. The belly of the muscle is the widest, thickest part of that muscle. So again, for example, with the biceps brachii, origin, insertion, and right around here is the wide, thick, oh, look at that, part of the muscle. That's the belly of the muscle. If you ever deal with something called trigger point or massage or any of the soft tissue therapies, you learn about the muscle of the belly, uh, muscle of the belly, strike that, reverse it, the belly of the muscle, and how you can work out kinks and knots and stuff like that. Moving on, let's talk about how muscles are named. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, but this hopefully will help you identify some of the muscles out there. Muscles are typically identified by some of the following criteria. Location, where is the muscle located? For example, all the pectoralis muscles are in the pectoral region. We have the number of muscle heads. For example, the biceps, bi means two. We have the triceps, tri means three. So number of heads. We have the directions of the fibers, the oblique and rectus. Rectus means straight. It's telling you which way the muscle fibers are going. We have the shape of the muscle. The deltoid is a great example of this one. It's like this and goes down. It's shaped like the Greek delta. We have the size, maximus, minimus. It tells you how big the thing is, okay? The gluteus maximus is bigger than the gluteus minimus, okay? Maximus, big, minimus, small. And then we have the action. What does it do? The pronator and the supinator. Hopefully you remember what those terms mean. The supinator, some soup, the pronator does that. So supinator makes the arms do this, or the forearms do this, and the pronator makes them do this. And finally, here is my advice to you on how to survive the muscular system. You have heard me talk about note cards, index cards in the past. If you have not listened to my advice so far, do so now, okay? I'm talking to you. Yes, you do it. Get some index cards. You will need these, especially for the muscular system. What you're gonna to wanna to do is on one side of the card, write the name of the muscle, and on the other side of the card, write the origin, write the insertion, write the action, write the nerve that goes to it, and take it with you wherever you go. The reason why I'm saying to do this is because it hits multiple modalities of learning. You are getting the auditory, because you can use them as flashcards, you can read them to each other. You're getting the visual, you're seeing this, you're getting the tactile, you're writing this stuff down. You're getting every mode that you can think of. And the really cool part is you're having to transcribe it from notes into your own material. That's also a huge help. I've noticed students in the past who have bought pre-made note cards. For some people it was effective, but again, I stick to my guns on this one. Buy some index cards, buy some note cards, make your own flashcards with these things.